Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or if you're here for the first time, hi there, thanks so much for checking out this video. This is my first ever reading vlog and I'm doing it for my Kathy Reich's Deja Dead book. <laughs> I am reading Kathy Wright's Deja Dead. There are a few reasons. The main reason that I'm reading this book specifically is because Rylan from Escaping Through Novels is hosting a mini Spooktober readathon this week, running from Monday the 22nd of March through until the end of the week. It is now Tuesday the 23rd. Um, it's still early in the morning. And basically this readathon for the week is just encouraging people to read thrillers or spooky books or mystery books. There are five prompts that you can choose as many as you like to take part in. So I am just taking part in one just because of my reading speed abilities. So I am reading a mystery thriller or spooky book from an author that is new to me. So this is Kathy Wright's first ever book from the Temperance Brennan Forensic Anthropologist Bones series. I've never read any of them so she is a new to me author. However I have every single book in the series. I think there's nearly 20 if not over 20 books in that series now and the reason I want to read them is because I actually went to university to study forensic anthropology. For anyone who doesn't know forensic anthropology uses the study of skeletal remains to help with the law to identify the remains of dead people who may not be able to be identified from common methods that a coroner or medical examiner would use. So you may not necessarily know the Kathy Reich's books but you might have heard of the TV series Bones which these books are based off of which follow Dr Temperance Brennan and FBI agent Seely Booth to solve crimes with victims who require a forensic anthropologist. And any forensic anthropologist, if they're being honest with you or being honest with themselves, will admit that Bones or these books even played a little bit of a part in why they wanted to become a forensic anthropologist. Unfortunately, it is nothing like the TV show would let you believe, but you know, it's still an absolutely fascinating course. And I think it would be really cool to see where the TV series came from. I have watched the entire TV series, but I never read the book. So what I did was I started collecting all of the books from charity shops and secondhand shops. This mini Spooktober readathon finally gave me the chance to start and it was one of my goals for the year was to at least make a dent and read at least half of the books in the series this year. So this will be my first one and I'm really looking forward to starting it and I'm going to take you along on the journey with me. I'm not sure if I'm going to be vlogging for every single book because it might get a little bit repetitive, I'm not sure until I read them, but I thought I'd at least bring you along on the first one because at the end of the day these books basically kind of inspired me to apply to university to do the degree that I ended up doing. So quite a big moment in my life so I thought I would share with all of you. I will keep you updated as I read and yeah I'll just check in with you when I've got more so to say. So I actually couldn't sleep last night so I ended up going on Rylan's channel. She was hosting some live sprints to kick off the Spooktober week readathon so I ended up getting like 60 pages read of it between sort of 1am and 3am my time this morning and today I'm gonna just keep on reading it. I will keep you updated as I read to see how it goes. <laughs> just reached the 100 page mark in Deja Dead. It's just coming up for 11am here so that's a nice wee chunk off of the day. I do have some other books I'm reading as well. So I'm gonna go have a shower and then I need to go do some food shopping but when I come back I will sit down again and read and keep you updated as I go along. 
So I'm updating a little bit later than I had originally planned. It has just turned 5 p.m. here. Um, after I had a shower and got dressed, I obviously went and did the food shop, like I said, and then I finished tidying my room. I hoovered and I also rearranged some bookshelves. So I haven't actually read anything else since my 100 page check in this morning. There's about 45 minutes to an hour until my dinner will be ready though. So I'm going to try and fit in as many pages as I can now. But I thought you might like to see what I did with my bookshelves. So let me show you my read section of my bookshelf so these are all the books that i have already read and this is all the series that i have read <laughs> Is coming up for 9 p.m. and I am absolutely exhausted since I only got about 45 minutes sleep last night so I'm gonna call it a night so obviously in the description and in the title I do mention that this contains spoilers so I'm just gonna talk you a little bit through the book so far so spoiler warning so I've managed to read 215 pages today. I'm really happy with that out of 509. So I'm just under halfway. I'm really enjoying it so far, actually. We've met all of the sort of main characters. So we've met Dr. Temperance Brennan and we've been introduced to her life. And we've also met Detective uh, Claudel. But there's also other detectives involved in this. So I'm not sure... Obviously, my knowledge comes from the TV series Bones. She obviously has FBI agent Seely Booth, probably to make it a little bit more dramatic for the TV show. So I don't know if Claudel is meant to be sort of who Seely Booth is, or if maybe it's the detective Ryan, because he's also in it a lot. You know, it's keeping me hooked. I will say there's definitely trigger warnings for this book. It is, very, it is quite graphic. So far, what has happened is three sets of human remains have been found all female all under the age of 30 and they've all been found in similar manners so the bodies have been dismembered and then wrapped up in plastic bags and buried and dr temperance brennan is first of all convinced there's it's a serial killer and second of all she is convinced that a crime that she worked on a year previously also might be by the same person. However, Detective Claudel is a little bit of a hard ass, to be honest. He doesn't seem very nice right now. And he kind of, I get the impression he doesn't really care about Dr. Temperance Brennan and Friends of Anthropology. Maybe he doesn't believe in it because this book is set in 1994. So back then, Friends of Anthropology was a very new science still. And a lot of police officers, I imagine, didn't believe in it so much so he, I think maybe he just thinks that Dr. Tempest Brennan is just a bit annoying because she wants to take a personal look at the case like she feels personally involved because she thinks there's a serial killer so I think she's probably going to be right she basically just as I finished this she was comparing the uh, tool marks between the remains that were found a year ago and one of the newest cases and they're identical so she's pretty sure they've been cut up by like the exact same tool same person same method kind of thing so it's getting good there's definitely similarities to the tv show and but there's definitely a lot of differences as well however obviously this book was written i don't know if it was written in 94 so it was written in 1998 and it takes place in 1994. So obviously they had to modernise it for the TV show and Friends of Anthropology has progressed since then it progresses every year. So I'm sure that's obviously some of the reasons there's some differences. I'm really liking the character of Temperance Brennan already. She has some elements from the show that I think are like re really redeemable qualities. She doesn't seem to be giving off the impression of being the world leading friends anthropologist which is very much dr temperance brennan in the tv series thing she is the leading expert in this field like everyone wants her on their cases and that isn't in the book so i don't know if maybe that comes later on if she gets more renowned as friends anthropology becomes 
more of a acknowledged science and obviously the difference with the fbi agent not being an fbi agent so yeah really enjoying this like i said i am already hooked i'm interested to see who it is i kind of have some suspicions but I don't know if I'm completely off the ballpark so I'll be interested to see who the killer is at the end. The only sort of con I'm seeing at the moment is I think there's a lot of extra words that maybe aren't needed. For example she describes the houses and the streets a lot which is kind of great I suppose if you're someone who has a mind who can picture things as the author explains them or describes them then great but I'm not one of those people so I'm literally reading two three pages worth of description and I'm just getting a blank image in my head so I'm kind of brushing over those scenes a little bit and I don't really think they add to the story like personally I don't think knowing what Temperance's best friend's house looks like has added to this story at all. That's my only con I think at the moment I think maybe Overall, I think I'm going to think this could have been a shorter book. Kathy Reichs herself is a forensic anthropologist. So she basically based the character of Dr. Temers Brennan off herself. That is one of the pros to this book. The forensic anthropology, from my knowledge, does seem quite accurate. The anthropological language that's being used. Also, the procedure that the forensic anthropologists are using seems to be quite accurate as well from my experience obviously there's different procedures for places like canada america than there would be in the uk but there's definitely some similarities to things that we learn on the course and it's just kind of interesting the anatomical language that's in the book i automatically obviously know what bones she's then talking about but what's good is even if you didn't know that the ulna is in the arm she very much explains that the ulna is in the arm without making it obvious that she's going okay the ulna is the arm bone so that's really good as well because it means the author is actually bridging the gap between having accurate terminology and the layman people being able to read it which is really really important in forensic science and i think that's something that you wouldn't get from someone who doesn't have that real world experience so that was really cool for me to see like i really like that personally it might mean diddly squit to anyone else but for me that was really cool so 215 pages in and i will continue tomorrow and keep you guys updated as i go good morning it is wednesday the 23rd it is just about 11 o'clock in the morning i have my first ever pilates one-on-one -on -one session today this is something my physiotherapist is doing with me to help with some back problems that i have so i have that at 1 15 today for an hour so i'm gonna get washed get dressed have some food and then go to that so i'm gonna read as much as i can up until i go to pilates and then i will read when i get back as well so i will keep you updated as i go and i will speak to you later <laughs> got back from pilates oh my god she made me use muscles that i didn't even know existed so i was a bit sore but it's good i got about 40 pages read before i went and i've just been helping my mom with a few things in the house so it is now 20 to 4 in the afternoon so i'm gonna sit down now and do some reading and hopefully you know get a whole bunch done before my dinner but i will keep you updated as i go hey everyone so it is now quarter to eight and I still haven't really read much of my book today. I'm now on page 270. So I've read like just over 55 pages today. 
which isn't that great but you know i've had a good day and i've just come upstairs because i was freezing downstairs hence the uh, blanket i am gonna try and read for a bit i'll probably still be up for another two hours so i'm gonna try and get in as much as i can and so i need to stop to do other things so i will check back in with you either before i go to bed or tomorrow morning if i don't remember to check in <laughs> for nine o'clock it is just before 20 to nine I managed to get up to 319 so i have read over 100 pages today it's coming up to quite a climactic point i think there's been a few tense moments that have started making your heart pitter patter i still am not seeing at all who the killer could be i don't know if we have definitely met the person yet or not but it's still really really good at the moment she's really the only one 100 percent convinced there is a serial killer so the detectives are being a little bit iffy with her just at the end of this section that i've read the there is now five bodies that dr temperance brennan believes have all been killed by the same person the latest one that had been found is an older murder it wasn't a recent murder and the head was missing when they found all of the remains so the killer has just recently put the head on a spike and stuck it into dr temperance brennan's garden so obviously i think she's probably on to something because i think the killer is kind of trying to scare her or i do believe it's the one killer for all of them now she just needs to find the evidence to prove it all of the bodies so far because they've been cut up she has examined the tool marks and worked out they've all been cut up by the same tool and in the same way as well so she's trying to put the pieces together and that's i think gonna put her in danger there's also a side story involving her best friend Gabby who has picked up a stalker. So my thoughts are at the moment is Gabby's stalker maybe the killer and Gabby is the next victim. Less than 200 pages left. Really enjoying it so far. Yesterday I said the, what the drawback I'm finding is there's kind of a bit too much words like a bit too many descriptions of houses and streets. I am still feeling that now. It seems that every single street that the character drives down or walks down is named and I don't think it adds really much to the story. It takes me out of the story. There's certain scenes I can picture exactly. So for example, when she found the head in her garden, I could picture that exactly. But as soon as she starts talking about driving down this street and then turning onto that street and then, then she walked on this, I'm just completely out of the story. I'm just reading the words. So that's my downside at the moment. I said yesterday it's really good that the forensics are kind of being described and it seemed somewhat accurate. But there were certain bits in this last chapter that I read. She was describing the knife and saw marks on the bone. And even as someone who has studied tool marks and things, although to a very small extent, I was completely lost. So there was a good three three pages describing these like tool marks and it meant nothing to me it was cleared up later on because she obviously then spoke to someone who is more of an expert with tool marks and he basically said okay so this is the kind of saw you're looking for it will probably be this this and this so that was fine because it was summed up later but for those three or four pages i was completely out of the story i had no idea what she was talking about so maybe a little bit too much forensic science there and not enough layman's terms Maybe I just don't know enough about saws to understand that. Not sure. Apart from that, still really enjoying it. Really excited to see where it ends up and see how it finishes. So I will get back to that tomorrow. I will check in with you tomorrow morning when I wake up and let you know how my reading is going. Good morning. It is Thursday the 25th. It is half 11. I am up. I am showered and dressed i'm about to go food shopping with my mum and then i literally plan to sit down and read all day and i will check back in with you when i have an update for y'all <laughs> Thank you.
done terribly today. I took the dogs out, I came back, I did start reading and I kind of jumped on Zoom for a little bit with my friends and I tried to get a little bit of reading in before it hit 8pm which it is 5 minutes to because me and my friends are continuing our Marvel marathon that we've been doing for a couple of months now really and we are up to Thor Ragnarok so we've got Thor then we've got Ant-Man and the Wasp and then we just have the last two Avengers and that is us done however reading wise I've gotten up to page 364 so I've read like 50 pages today I may check in with you right before I go to bed if not I will check in with you in the morning and let you know how I did once I finish my movie <laughs> Okay, so I forgot to update everyone this morning, but it is now 20 past six in the evening and I have finished Deja Dead. I'm giving it a four star rating. I really, really enjoyed it. I'm excited to continue on with the series. I thought it was written really well. There was, however, a few drawbacks, which is what gave me the four star overall rating. The one thing that I didn't like about the specifics in the book was that Dr. Temperance Brennan goes off by herself a lot and doesn't keep in contact with the police and ends up actually putting herself and sometimes other people in danger. And whilst that was a little bit in line with how Dr. Temperance Brennan is in the TV series, I felt in the book it was done a lot more and I didn't really like it. It kind of reminded me of Pretty Little Liars. When all these bad things are happening, your first instinct should be to tell the police, especially in the case of Dr. Tempest Brennan when she worked with them. But she kept going off on her own and I felt it was a little bit unnecessary. The first time she did it, I thought, okay, fair enough. I understand why she did it. But then she kept doing it. And I just thought by the end of it, she had done it one too many times and it would have been a lot better if she had just called her colleagues. So that was one thing I didn't like about it. The other things I'd mentioned previously in the video, just sometimes the descriptions of streets, buildings, and sometimes even some of the forensic science was done a little bit too extensively and I didn't really feel it added to the story. I felt it just took me out of the story and ended up distracting me and not making it as fluid a reading experience. The dramatization of some of the scenes I think is definitely fair enough because if this was a realistic portrayal of what an investigation is like, it wouldn't make that much of an interesting read. So I thought that was really good. I liked that the forensic science and a lot of the anatomical language used was really accurate. I really liked the plot twist that came in the book. You actually don't find out who the serial killer is until the very end when Dr. Temperance Brennan has worked out who it is. I also didn't know who the killer was because the author uses a red herring throughout the book which I thought was really good because I did think that the red herring person was going to be the killer so it was cool that I believed that and it was done well so I think the whole story ties up it is got a bit of a neat ending however everything fits there was no extra bits just chucked in and overall I just really enjoyed it I'm looking forward to reading the next book so that's it I hope you enjoyed my first ever reading vlog for Deja Dead by Kathy Wright which I gave a four star. If you liked this video, please like and let me know what you liked about it. If you've read the book, if you've not read it, if you've seen the TV series, let me know. And as always, I hope you have a lovely morning, day or night, no matter what time zone you're in. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.